Larry Fitzgerald, first round, 2004, University of Pittsburgh. Crowd is back with a lot Football of was a welcome diversion. In his two seasons at Pitt, Fitzgerald averaged more than 100 yards receiving per game and scored 34 touchdowns. You knew where we were going, what we were doing, and you couldn't stop. Once we got inside the 10-yard line, we were throwing a jump ball fade to Larry. Touchdown, Panthers! You know it's coming, can't stop it. They would triple cover him and still wouldn't be able to cover him. made so many contested catches. It was phenomenal. There was a West Virginia catch that he made when it seemed like he was getting hit at the same time he was catching the football. There was a catch against Rutgers when he caught the ball, but felt like it was behind his back. There was the a &M catch over his shoulder. Oh my, what a catch by Fitzgerald! During his sophomore season, Fitzgerald set an NCAA record for consecutive games with a receiving touchdown. I got invited to the draft in 2004, and uh, you know I just wanted to spend it with my loved ones and, and everybody that's been around me and with me since day one. So I ended up going to Chicago. We spent our time down to Chicago Hilton, right there on Lake Michigan. The uh, third choice in the 2004 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Larry Fitzgerald, wide receiver, University of Pittsburgh. When Fitzgerald came into the league in 2004, the question being asked was why did Arizona draft him? The Cardinals had the third overall pick that year and a lot of us thought they needed a quarterback. Four years earlier, he'd been a ball boy for Dennis Green's Minnesota Vikings. Now, Dennis Green was his head coach. McCown takes a slight step to the right, throws it to the end zone, and another leaping catch by Larry Fitzgerald for a touchdown for the Cardinals. Man, is he something. Loves right now, throwing back to the right, going end zone, Fitzgerald, he's there! He's got a touchdown! Larry Fitzgerald sets the Cardinal record for catches of the year, and it comes on a touchdown! Denny Green knew a great player when he saw one, and Fitzgerald was great from his first play in the NFL. He's got Fitzgerald in the leaping catch at the 45. But when the Cardinals finally got that quarterback they needed in 2005, he quickly discovered that the young receiver had big potential and a bigger ego. Kurt was like, you have the ability to be someone better if you do this and you do that. And Kurt, I'm good, man. I'm straight. I'm good enough right now, right? He looks at me like, are you kidding me, right? Like, did this dude really just say this? My first impression is, wow. This guy is so good, and he makes all these catches, and he's had great success, and he doesn't even know how to play the game yet. He told me, he said, you might be the fourth or fifth best receiver I ever played with. You're not even the best receiver on the team right now, you know, because Anquan was there, and it stung me. And after that, you know, I started, you know, I had a couple good years, I strung together, and I was like, well, am I getting close to Tori and Isaac yet? Three, one, two, three, the best. Not even close. They're Super Bowl champions, you know? They've been all pro multiple times. The thing I appreciated about him most was after that first conversation when he told me, ah, I'm good enough, Kurt, that he spent the rest of his career working to be the best at everything that he did. Back to throw, fires left side for Fitzgerald. He caught it at the five. He died. He's in. Two years after Warner arrived, more tough love came Fitzgerald's way, courtesy of a new offensive coordinator. When Todd Haley was the offensive coordinator, he called Larry a one-trick pony. And that, Larry took offense to that. Is it true you called him a one-trick pony? Yeah, I think I called him that a few times. Meaning what? He could catch the deep ball, and uh, that was about it. It wasn't true, of course. But as a coach, you know, you got to try to motivate however you can. Todd Haley said, you catch the ball, you fall down on the ground. You need to be more like Anquan Bolden. Anquan catches the ball and suddenly turns into a raging bull. You need to do the same thing. I just took it personal and I said, you know what, I'm gonna prove him wrong. Caught Fitzgerald, 10-5, dies, Fitzgerald is gonna be in! In the 2008 postseason, the Cardinals made a run at the Lombardi Trophy. Gonna throw deep, near side going for Fitz, he's in double covered. It doesn't matter, he caught it anyway! See, everything was just falling in place over and over and over again. Super Bowl 43, Arizona.
Arizona's high-flying offense led by Kurt Warner against the Pittsburgh defense that was number one in the league and allows only 14 points a game. And it's going to be a fade for Fitzgerald who's going to go up and make the catch for the touchdown. Going to throw a fade right side, Fitzgerald, he got it! Touchdown, Larry Fitzgerald! Now I was trying to rip the ball out. And Larry just gripped it like his cousin was the hawk. I did everything I can do. It was just Larry being Larry. It seemed like it happened so fast. You know, just looking up the end zone, trying to make sure nobody was closing on me. And I've been running into that Steelers end zone thinking, oh my God, we might have won a Super Bowl. He set the record for the most catches, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns in a single postseason. In four postseason games, Fitzgerald caught 30 passes for 546 yards and seven touchdowns. The inquisitive one also learned a very painful lesson. I would imagine it probably hurts more to lose than it feels good to win. And it is caught for a touchdown by Holmes. And the Pittsburgh Steelers become the first franchise in history to win six Super Bowls. It drives me a lot, Mike. You know, there's not too many days that go by that I don't think about that game. And you know, if I would have just been able to take a better angle and tackle James Harrison before he got to the end zone. You know, there's a lot of things that go through your mind um, about plays you could have made and things that got away. But, uh, you know, the thing I, I take most of it is just I enjoyed the journey of getting there. In 2013, Bruce Arians became the Cardinals head coach. One of his first decisions was to move Larry Fitzgerald from a split end to a slot receiver. I felt like it was a, a slight initially. Like, he doesn't think I'm good enough to do this anymore. He's trying to run me out. You know, those type of th thoughts go to your mind. I talked to Heinz Ward, and I, I talked to Reggie Wayne. And both of them told me the same thing. And once you let him know and you show him that you are completely committed to what he's doing. So explain it one more time to me, Coach. So it's going to be Trout two. right, Trout right. That's Z, Bill. That's Bill. 70 go. Then things are going to look good for you. Possible pressure off that side. Knock the crap out of it and get out of the flat, right? I think it is the strongest argument for him being a Hall of Famer. Not only the great things he did, but he was asked to sacrifice, he was asked to do things he wasn't particularly comfortable with. He wasn't even that good in the slot his first year, but man did he improve. As much as Fitzgerald's game has changed, one thing remains the same. In crunch time, no one is better. So now Arizona from the 20-yard line. Looks coming, Matthews. Palmer stepping away at first. Palmer extending the play. Nobody there. Crosses the field. Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is going to take it into Green Bay territory. Larry Fitzgerald inside the 30. The 20. If he Larry scores, Fitzgerald is insane to the four-yard line. One of the greatest postseason performers ever. His 08 postseason was one for the ages. So what happens here? 75 yards, first and goal. Little flip to Fitzgerald, he scores! And the Cardinals win an amazing game. values time so much, seems to play his best when time is short. Larry Legend does it again! Cardinals win! They're down in 10, the Cardinals need something. And they're gonna go deep. And the catch is made by Fitzgerald, short of the goal line. Well, look at 
this concentration. Look at this will to go get that football. What a catch by Larry Fitzgerald. You got Larry Fitzgerald on Jaquan Jarrett, a safety. Again, I'd have Asamoah awesome all over him. Look at the concentration by Larry Fitzgerald. Let's see if he gets in. Down by contact right there. Good call by the officials once again. If you ever stand by him, listen to him catch the ball. The sound of silence is what you'll hear. Why do you throw me the ball? And it sounds like it's hitting a frying pan. And why do we throw Larry the ball? And it sounds like he's catching it with pillows. He makes crazy catches all the time. People just kind of get numb to it, like, oh, yeah, yeah, another catch by Larry. I'm like, no, that was like one of the greatest catches I've ever seen right there in this walkthrough. Him and I collectively have the best two set of hands that's ever played in the NFL. Larry Fitzgerald could catch a B with chopsticks. He's not your 2017 superstar. Flashy Antonio Browns and Brandon Marshall, the outspoken, and then T.O.'s and the Ocho Cinco's and all these different characters. He's in that category skill-wise and productivity-wise and probably ahead of that category, but he's a throwback. The way he carries himself, the way he acts, the teammate that he is, he is not in that group. There's zero diva. Try to go back and find one where he's celebrating by himself. You probably won't be able to find it because he doesn't do it. He hands the referee the ball and he goes to celebrate with his teammates. There was one play, he had a blindside hit on me. He could have killed me. He could have, like, um, pretty much put me out the game. And he made the block, he decleated me and all that. It was an effective block. For what he could have done, you know what I mean? It was pretty much a nothing hit. But then he comes up and apologizes. Most people, you take that shot. You take your shot, bang, there's football. You know, it just shows the kind of guy he is. And they throw fits a slant. He catches it. And the old man still had wheels. I mean, he walked off on our entire linebacker, secondary, and the rest of us. The old man can still run! 80 yard touchdown by Larry Fitzgerald! And off to the races he went! The century mark for Larry Fitzgerald! Career touchdown number 100! He's officially the best catch I've ever seen. Most football legends don't reach that status until they retire. But in his 12th season, Larry Fitzgerald achieved rarefied air by becoming the youngest player to reach 1,000 catches. You put the ball anywhere narrow, you find a way to come down with it. It's over the head of Larry Fitzgerald, but he somehow caught it. What an incredible grab. That's an unbelievable catch by an unbelievable player. It's a spectacular catch by the future Hall of Famer. Stan setting up, pumps right, now throws. Far side, deep, it is caught! Larry Fitzgerald! Fitzgerald in the end zone, touchdown! You want to target a legend? Throw it to 11. Larry Fitzgerald's playing like he's 25 again. He is back with a vengeance. I don't think there's a guy that I want catching the ball more than Larry Fitzgerald. With the Cardinal franchise. Lawrence again got close, and it's lofted up. 50-50 battle. Larry Fitzgerald says he has it, and the officials concur as he ripped it away from Orlando Scandrick. Oh, man, what a catch. First half, this time he throws a corner to Fitzgerald. It's another 50-50. Here comes in motion. And it's a fade, and it is caught by Fitzgerald. Another amazing catch. The 100th touchdown of that spectacular career.
The Arizona Cardinals' all-time leading receiver is coming back for 2018. On Thursday, the Cardinals announced that Larry Fitzgerald will be returning for a 15th season. The Cardinals' wideout has racked up over 15,000 yards to go along with 1,200-plus catches and 110 touchdowns during his career. He's coming off a season in which he amassed 1,000 yards receiving for a ninth time. Fitzgerald has inched his way up the receiving record books and currently needs just 390 yards to pass Terrell Owens for second on the all-time receiving yards list and 92 catches to overtake Tony Gonzalez for second on the receptions list.